this video I'm just going to talk about list comprehensions now let's say that you make a list let's say we call it a and a is equal to 1 4 9 and 6 right that's cool okay so what well let's say that we want to make another list from this list that has every single value in this list except uh, doubled so that we get a list with the values 2, 8, 18, and 12, right? Well, you'd say to me, well, that's not a problem at all. I can just make an empty list. We can make a for loop and we'll say for n in a, so for number in a, just, uh, I don't know, just append to c. We're going to put that as b. I don't know why I put it as c, to be honest. I'm going to say c, I'm going to say b.append uh, n, and then after this for loop, we are going to print out b. Sorry, we're going to append n times by 2, not n as it is. That was a mistake there. And we should get this list returned to us, or b should contain double of all these numbers in the exact order that it appears in, right? Okay, so we got that 2, 8, 18, 12. That's great, that's worked. But we could probably do this in, you know, just one line. In fact, we can do this in one line, okay? And we can do this via comprehension. It's kind of similar to doing everything in one line with a lambda function, but it's not lambda, okay? So we're going to say C is an array, a list specifically. And we're going to say it's going to be x times 2 for x in a. So we're going to say that each value times 2 uh, is going to be inside of this. So every x within a uh, times by 2 is going to be in c. So every item in a times by 2 is going to be in c. If we print c, we should essentially get this the same list here right a replication of that which shows that essentially um, you can use the set comprehension to do things that you could do otherwise yeah you could do um, with a for loop right let's think of a another use of this kind of set comprehension let's say we want to make a list that is composed of I don't know, let's say just tens, a bunch of tens, a ten times table from, we'll say zero to ten. So we'll say for i, which means iteration, in range zero to ten, this should give us all the values of ten, the ten times table from ten multiplied by zero up to ten multiplied by nine. I'm just going to print that. I'm going to print D. Oh, that has to be I as well. Sorry. These two had to be the same. Can't be different. And there we go. We got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So you can see with this set comprehension, we can do some useful stuff, right? Some more stuff we can do, or just one more thing we can do before I finish off. We can actually have the squared version of something. You know, there's actually a shorthand way to do um, x squared, and it's just x double multiplication 2. And this will give you uh, x squared, whatever number squared. Just a shorthand way. You don't have to do it if you want. I actually think it's easier to... Just do x times x, but whatever. I'm going to say for range 0 and 10. So the first item should be 0, second should be 1, third should be 4. And we'll get all the squared values for of all the items squared from 0 to 9, including 9, but not including 10. Right? I'm just going to print out e. Now, look at these variable names. They're not very appropriate variable names at all. Okay? We should probably give better variable names. 0, 1... 4, 9, you can see that those are all the all squared numbers, right? So we can use the set notation for quite a few things here. 
I'm actually going to call this squared and I'm going to just change it there just so that our actual variables have values that make sense. Yeah, I'm going to call that tens and we're going to call that twos. Yeah, twos. There we go. Just a bit nicer, that. All right? Just a bit nicer. Yeah. Now, how have I made these set notations? All I've done is I've just put whatever algorithm I want to put in inside of these square brackets. And this uh, will generate numbers inside of these square brackets, inside of these lists, based on the algorithm. So, like I said, it's basically a lambda, except I don't have to declare, you know, a lambda function. I do have to use uh, for in range, right? So I either have to use for in range to specify that I want to make X amount of items within the range with whatever value specified here, or it has to be within another array. I, I can't just make set notation based on crazy things. Although I probably could do it with filters and such, but you know, this is just a basic set notation. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That's all set notation is. You just put your algorithm inside of this and give it, put it over an iterator or an iterable, whether that be, like I said, an array or a range, and it should do your algorithm for you and make your arrays. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy.